Hello, thank you for joining us for this week's Market Carver. Adam is taking a very much needed and very much deserved break. And so we're fortunate to have Zach Unger uh, doing the Market Carver with me this week. Uh, you might not be familiar with Zach if you haven't been to our Brownsburg office. He's over on the on the west side of Indy working in Brownsburg. He serves at one of our analysts on our team, helping Adam and I on the port with the portfolios, doing different trades and different research with us. Also helps with our Monday morning uh, meeting with all of our advisors, preparing all that research. So Zach's going to be joining me today as we go through uh, some of the key data points and some of the most interesting things happening in the market this week. We're going to be talking about some of the, the latest moves in the market, what's driving stocks higher and lower, looking as we close out the second quarter, we start moving into getting earnings announcements, look at some of the, the data that we to start to be expecting for that, and then also looking at how investor sentiments changed as investors start to readjust their cash levels. But first, we're going to get started with Zach's going to start looking at what's been driving the market higher here most recently. Yeah, so we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the rally in equities that we saw last week with the S&P finishing the week up over 6%. Uh, so three panels here on this chart. The top one is an index of the 50 largest companies in the S&P 500. So um, you can think about this like an expansion of the traditional FANG group that we talk about often. And then the, the middle panel there is comparing that group of the largest 50 to the overall S&P 500. And so what you'll see there is as that line moves higher, what that is showing is that those 50 largest companies are actually outperforming the broader S&P 500. So you can see that that green arrow there and the, and the upward movement from last week uh, showing that last week the, S, the, the largest 50 actually outperformed the S&P 500. And so what we want to look at, uh, well, it's important to note also that those 50 are some of the ones that over the past six months have been beaten up the most as the market has declined. Uh, so a lot of people getting back into those blue chip names, uh, maybe names that are a little bit more secure than what we might see in small caps, for example. And so the bottom chart, uh, the bottom panel of this chart there, the small caps versus the S&P 500. Same idea as the middle panel, where when the line is moving upward, small caps are outperforming the S&P 500. And as it's moving downward, like we saw last week, they're actually underperforming the S&P 500. So the significance of, of those, two, those two panels moving in opposite directions, what that's showing us is that last week, the rally was really driven by people getting back into safer, bigger names like your Apples, your Amazons, your Googles and still shying away from the more risky assets in small caps that we might traditionally see with uh, trend reversal uh, or something of that nature. So more so people um, buying into the bigger, safer companies um, than, than into the riskier assets that we might see um, as investors become more bullish and, and enter more of a risk on mode. Oh, very good. Thank you, Zach. Um, one of the questions we often get is when will the market finally bottom? When will we start seeing uh, stocks to rise? What are you looking for? And this chart's a great example of that. Traditionally, not always, but traditionally when the market does start to rally higher, as Zach said, the things you, you should start seeing is an increase in risk appetite. Small caps should be outperforming, not the biggest 50. And so that's why we're still cautious on this market. We still think that uh, maybe there's still some risk that we need to squeeze out before we really could start maybe seeing equities start to move higher. Um, the next point we want to make is that, like I said, as we close out this quarter, we start looking at earnings for the second quarter. And what's interesting to note here is this, this chart here, the, the solid black line is the S&P 500. Uh, unfortunately, start, still going down. Uh, the lighter blue line, which is that red circle around, is earnings estimates. So this is what analysts, all the, the analysts at different Wall Street banks, what they expect the different companies to start reporting. And if you'll notice, there's a pretty big divergence there. We're still seeing earnings estimates are sitting near their highs, while the actual market has been selling off the shares of those companies. And so what the risk this potentially poses is as these companies start to report earnings, that the estimates have set a pretty high bar. The companies have to report really strong numbers to meet those estimates. And traditionally, if they don't meet those estimates, then they, we start seeing the, the traders and, the, and Wall Street will begin to sell those equities because they have to readjust their expectations. So right now, expectations are pretty high still. And we think that this is a, this is a potential catalyst for why we could still see some 
some volatility, some risk within the market for certain areas of the of the, of the economy and of the of the market. Um, one area that we still continue to be heavily focused on is energy. Um, energy continues to do well a lot with higher um, input costs. Think natural gas, um, crude oil. Because those have gone up, a lot of the producers actually now are able to make a lot more money. Uh, and so a lot of the energy companies that had struggled for so many years when when commodities markets were, were not doing great on the energy side, they're actually able to start really start to have some expansion in their margins, start having higher revenues. And so we do continue to look at different opportunities in the energy space, and that's going to reflect it across our, our models. But as we go into the second quarter um, market, the Wall Street gets really focused on earnings. And right now, the bar is set pretty high. Um, the last point we want to talk about is cash. So Zach was talking about how investors have been chasing after those, those 50 largest companies. Um, and that's not a sign that investors are really increasing their risk appetite. Another way we can express that is looking at the amount of cash that investors have. Specifically, we're looking at fund managers, mutual funds, um, professional asset managers, things like that. And they've raised a lot of cash. Um, they have actually are now holding as a percent of their allocation a higher amount of cash than they did during uh, the COVID crisis. You can see there April 20th on this chart, April 2020 on this chart, um, actually had a little bit less cash than in May of 2022. So we're starting to see fear has eventually obviously crept back into this market. It's taken a while uh, as we're, they're just now starting to really raise cash after the market dropped about 20 percent. And now we've seen a, seen a little bit of a bounce um, last week. But this is the this is kind of the fear. These are the things that we want to start looking for um, as once you have everyone is finally sold out and there's no one left to sell. That's when finally we can start seeing buyers return to this market. If we look back again at that chart. We can see that not a lot of these um, these dates, not a lot of these peaks in cash were, were significant market bottoms. We started seeing cash get raised during the tech crisis um, back in July of 2000 and March 2001. Nowhere near the, event, the actual bottom that occurred then eventually in March of 2003. Um, and then again, December 08, that was initially the, the absolute bottom in the market after the financial crisis. We still had a little bit more selling till we got to March. Um, so those much longer term downtrends, we started seeing investors raise cash, not necessarily at the bottom, but as sentiment started to really wool bearish. Those other instances of really high cash, 2012, 2016, uh, obviously the COVID crash in 2020, those actually were great times to start looking for opportunities. And so I think that's where we're always trying to find different ways to, to look at the market, try to see if there's any possible opportunities for the portfolio. Um, but in a, in a broad sense, we still great, remain pretty risk off, um, pretty defensive. Um, Zach, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Uh, kind of looking at in sentiment, some of the other stuff that we've talked about? No, I think that just about covers everything that I've been looking at. Oh, very good. Well, pretty, we'll keep it pretty short and sweet. Adam should be back with me next week. Um, if you would like to schedule a meeting, we have the phone number there and then the, the QR code that you're able to scan. Uh, also, don't forget to listen to the weekly radio show uh, that can be found on various platforms. You can see listed there on your screen. Thank you again for joining us. If you have any questions, please reach out to our team. Let us know. We're more than happy to have those conversations. Uh, until next week, have a good night. Mm -hmm.